Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be doing a score review for Mega Man Legacy Collections Rockman 2, Dr. Wily No Nozzle. Um, sorry, I don't speak fluent Japanese and don't understand the correct pronunciation so if I said that wrong I apologize from what I could read it roughly translates to the riddle of Dr. or Dr. Wiley's riddle or the mystery of Dr. Wiley I believe is what the translations uh, said so I don't know if that's accurate or not but for the um for this game, I'm going to be scoring this in five separate categories. And of course, as with all things related to the Mega Man franchise, it was originally, or not Mega Man, the Rockman franchise, it was originally published or developed by Capcom and published by Capcom. But this particular iteration, uh, the Mega Man Legacy Collection version, was developed by Digital Eclipse and it was published by Capcom. And, like I said before, I judge this game based on, or score this game based on five different categories. The first one being story. And, unlike the first Rockman game, <clears throat> the story screens for this one are not translated. Which, there's only one. It's in the intro leading up to the start of the game. And I couldn't find anything online, so I can't read it to you so that you know what it said. Because I know it says things a little differently than it does for the Mega Man franchise. Because the Japanese have worded it better to be a more... Uh, what's the best way to put it? The American side basically made it be like a heroic action shooter, whereas... The Japanese version, I think, was more of a more of a dark, gripping story kind of feel to the games. But I mean, this is the original Mega Six Mega Man Rock Man game, so there isn't a whole lot of story to these. I think most of it starts at four, so I'll worry about that when I get to that. So overall, the story there's not really any story to this game. There, there's not even an ending story, which surprised me. I completely forgot that the one for Mega Man didn't have one at the end either. Now, for the graphics, as I have always said in these Rockman and Mega Man games, for the time it came out, this looked really good. It's got an iconic look. Uh, the abilities look good. Like, the animations look good for the time. And they still hold up today if you're into the whole 8-bit graphic looking era. So, I mean, if you guys like any of the Mega Man or Rockman games, you'll enjoy this one. Now, for the story, or not story, music and sound effects. As I said with the Mega Man games and the first Rockman game, the music and the sound effects are phenomenal. That's one of the main things that the Mega Man, early Mega Man and Rock Man games are uh, highly well renowned for. This game has a stellar soundtrack through and through. The boss music sounds amazing. The, the robot master stages sound amazing overall. And as with keeping with the tradition of the Mega Man style games, the Rockman games still fall into line with their iconic sound effects like the jumping and the shooting and the pause screen and the teleport sounds, you know, all the key things that were staples of the Rockman franchise. Now for the gameplay mechanics and control. Now this game controls like any, or just it controls just like the first Rockman game. It's literally run back and forth, shoot, jump. There, there's nothing special there. The only issue, the difference is that the abilities are different. But as I said in the Mega Man version of the game, this game added um, a few features to the game to help enhance and lengthen it. This particular Rockman game 
added two additional robot masters to the roster so instead of fighting six you are fighting eight now and eight continues from here on out to be the staple number of robot masters you fight in the game um, they also introduced the e-tank in this particular um, iteration of the Mega Man franchise four is the max you can have they also lowered or um, had the first introduction of um, utility items that were obtained via bosses uh, in the first Rockman game the only utility item you got was magnet beam and that had to be found in a Lechman stage items 1, 2, and 3 are obtained after beating very specific bosses in the um, Rockman 2 franchise or Rockman 2 game so you can't miss these and they are needed for fighting the bosses in the Dr. Wily stages um, in this one the Robot Master weapons that you pick up have a bit more use to them so I mean you can easily switch between them for like standard play if you're going through like let's say a Robot Master stage in the Wily stages you can you kind of got to, you know, hold on to your energy for specific scenarios, most most notably being the bosses, because there's two bosses in this game that if you do not have the right weapon or enough of the energy, you cannot beat them no matter how hard you try. Now, Rockman 2 has, uh, or unlike Mega Man, only has one difficulty. Now, if you played Mega Man 2, there was a normal and a challenge mode, or a challenge difficulty. Rockman 2 was exclusively the challenge difficulty, and that completely changed up how I played the game. It wasn't as much of a run and gun, and it, to me, it wasn't quite as fun, but it was challenging, and it really made me had to rethink how I played through the stages. So. If you go and compare these to my Mega Man 2 playthrough, you see that I used uh, different abilities versus different things in the Wily stages, unlike the um, my Mega Man 2 playthrough. So that's interesting. Uh, this difficulty, I know, makes the Robot Masters more durable, meaning your weapons and abilities tend to do a little less damage to them. Also, I don't know if it was part of the challenge difficulty or if it was because the Rockman game, because I know in some of the Rockman games, uh, the difference between Rockman and Mega Man is also like enemy placement, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it or if it's challenge mode, but there is definitely a lot of different placements of enemies and traps that weren't in Mega Man 2 when I played it on normal difficulty. So, there was that which also added more challenge. Two most notable things, both of which were in the Wily stages, was, um, I think it's Wily stage two. When you clear the drill room, and you have to use item three or one to go up that long wall, you have three sets of spike chain drop item, or weapons traps. And the third one had two really close together, which <clears throat> you had to be careful of or you'd get hit very easily. That wasn't in the normal mode of the Mega Man version, so I don't know if that's part of the challenge mode or if it's just a change they made in the Rockman going to Mega Man transversion. And then there was also, I want to say it was um, Wily Stage 4, the last stretch before the boss's chamber. You had two of the hopping armored sniper joes in the tall rooms and then there was and this is on the Mega Man 2 and one sniper joe in the lowered roof room right before the gate but they also put one in the tiny tunnel between the two mechanical sniper joe hopping sniper joes that was literally I tried everything I could think of there was no way to beat that particular sniper joe without taking a hit which added a lot of challenge because you were going into an already fairly tough fight without um, 
full health. So that that did definitely make it more challenging. Um, let's see, controls gameplay. Uh, this particular one, uh, it still plays just as great as the first one did, and it's. I mean, if, if you enjoyed any of the Mega Man or Rock Man games, you'll definitely enjoy this one. So, you know, hands down, a really good way of going from the first one to the second one. Now for the achievements. Now, just like the Mega Man games, you can jump between either Mega Man or Rock Man to get the associated achievement with the game. And it doesn't matter which combination you do to get all six to get the complete set achievement so this game has two achievements tied to it one being for beating Rockman 2 or if you've already beat Mega Man 2 you can skip this and then one for having completed all six of the Mega Man games in this collection which I have already done all six Mega Man games so I have that achievement already so it's only got two achievements tied to it now generally I rate a game 5 as average instead of the industry sta standard of 7 or 8. And this one not having much story, much less so that if you're American and you're not versed in it, or actually if you're any nationality other than Japan and you can't read Japanese, you can't read the intro. So that's kind of a hit to me. And the... Uh, the story the graphics you know like I said before you know the graphics are well done for the time they came out they still hold up well to today for the style of graphics that they are the uh, music sound effects you know those are stellar great sound effects awesome music the gameplay the controls and the mechanics all the things that they added the the gameplay is nice and smooth um, the movements are nice and weighty it's what you would expect in a Mega Man or Rockman game, so you know nothing new with that. The the additional mechanics and bosses and all the things they added were a great touch from going from the first game to the second game. And then the achievements are they're all right. So like I gave the Mega Man two, I'm gonna also give this one an eight out of ten because. As to this date, I don't think I've ever beaten Challenge Difficulty or Rockman 2 legitimately. So this was a fresh new take on the second game in this franchise. And it was a nice throwback to go back and see this game once again and play through it. So, 8 out of 10. I'll see you guys in the next one. And, as with all things gaming, game logic, am I right? Catch y'all later.